Let's stay for just one more lesson on the topic of this family. As you can see, we created some basic parameterization and uh, it's placed on the reference level. And in the project, we can always offset this object from the reference level to any particular value, for example, 500, right? We can also parameterize other properties of this object, of this extrusion, like extrusion start. So if we enter some negative value, it will go downwards. In the front view, it will be more clearly. Here we have our reference level and we can adjust this extrusion upwards or downwards. If, if I enter a positive value, it will just create an automatic offset from this reference level. But we can, of course, always in the project use this offset tool that it's built in into generic model tools. So in some way we need to also understand how this, uh, what tools we have already in the Revit project environment so we don't over constrain our definition. So I will create a zero value here and our, our shape is, is very basic. The other thing that can be done is that we are now attached to the faces of this of this extrusion. So you see that this width, this dimension is uh, attached to the faces of this cube, which in this case is uh, it's it's fine. It works, right? But sometimes it's better to first create uh, create some kind of constraints. Uh, by reference planes. So I will show you a different method of parameterizing this cube. I will delete these dimensions. As I'm deleting it from the screen, you can see that they are still in the project, so I can later use them uh, in the parameterizing process. But first I will create reference planes. Reference planes will be very useful for constraining geometry. I will do a very similar thing by drawing two planes here and two planes here. Then I will also create equality symmetry in both directions. And this time I will dimension this um, this uh, reference planes. Once selected, I can now select from the list width and height. Okay. So now it behaves properly according to the to the reference planes, but we need to make sure that uh, the geometry snaps to them and it's locked. So I will drag the shape handles and make sure it's locked. If it's in the same direction, I can put it in at some distance and then try to drag back and forth again until it snaps. You will really feel the, um, the tension here once I'm near this reference plane. So there's a, there's a really significant resistance. Okay, so this one is also locked. We can always check which uh, constraints are created by activating this show constraint view. It's only accessible in the Revit family editor as far as I know, or no, probably it's also in the Revit project, but uh, you will use it more often in the family editor. So in this red, dark red uh, lines color, you see where are the constraints. It's not maybe super useful, but super clear that's what I wanted to say, but you will get at least the grasp of the idea uh, in the basic project. And uh, let's go to the front. Here I can also draw a reference. I'm sorry, I, I selected a reference line. Reference lines is something totally different. I will draw a reference plane. So reference line is for something different. I will show you later. I will draw reference plane create dimension, create thickness, and also remember to 
lock this to this thickness. Oh, somehow it was already locked. So, but if not, oh, it's not locked actually. It's because uh, now the thickness uh, is same as extrusion end. So if I disable this um, this um, connection of extrusion end to none, you see, it will now behave separately and I can drag and lock it. So it's now more clear definition. Okay, so it will behave exactly the same if I change its values here. You see everything works perfectly, but it's just defined differently. It is also a good lesson that uh, we can create many things in a different way. There is always uh, mm, a different solution and the, depending on the Revit creator, the Revit uh, family creator, it can we can achieve the same results using the different tools. So, but I recommend using reference planes because in my opinion it's more clear way uh, it's it's it it gives us a lot of structure especially if we want to create some more complex geometries